Let me tell you a little bit more about our twin turbo LS manifolds that we're working on. Now this process has been going on for some time, but the original idea for this was to have maximum compatibility in the maximum number of vehicles using the LS platform. So naturally the place to go was up and high. So we've hugged the turbochargers on top of the valve covers so that it can fit width wise in the maximum number of vehicles. The actual design for the manifolds is meant to be somewhere between a tubular style free flowing turbo manifold like you'll see on our mainline turbo kits and a log style manifold that's a little bit cheaper to manufacture and fits the maximum number of vehicles. Uh, here we're looking at the left side manifold and if I do a cutaway for you what you can see is instead of a typical log style manifold where each exhaust runner uh, forms into the next we've actually divided them out and created an area for them to separate each pulse from the exhaust going up into the turbine up here. And we've done the same design on the right side manifold. It's the exact same lower portion on both manifolds. This one has to have a turn up on it to fit the, the turbocharger. So the, the maximum benefit from these manifolds is we think we can flow up to 2000 horsepower through these manifolds. We can fit them in most applications. They're made of 304 cast stainless steel for longevity and heat handling, and the turbos can be mounted directly to them. There's no turbo support brackets necessary. So now let me go show you our design methodology and how the samples have gone and how our production is working out. Come on, let's go check it out. So here you can see the lineup of each of the samples and iterations of this product, starting from a 3D printed version of that 3D CAD model that we actually install to these engines and make sure dimensionally everything fits properly. The next iteration, we actually had cast in a ductile iron. Now, we wanted to release these manifolds in a ductile iron, but it turned out to be that we couldn't get the precision we needed in that, so we had to switch to a stainless. So we chose 304 stainless cast which ends up with a finish looking something like this. Now this manifold appears to be mostly right, but there's a couple of deficiencies that needed to be corrected. Just a quick overview of how that works. You can see here, we take our designs and we scan them in, and then we can overlay the model that we originally did in 3D with the actual physical component. So this is a scan overlay, and you can see here, we've got a couple of issues that we're resolving. Number one, the center, of the casted piece was not properly done. So when it was machined, we ended up with these inconsistencies and this sample ended up being rejected. Also, if you look on the inside, there's some major issues going on there with the casting process that we refined in the next iteration. This iteration is on the same inspection report I just showed you. And everything's actually looking pretty good. We're real close. Now we're down to small details like when it was machined flat, they went too thin on the top flange and so that needs to be raised back up so we maintain symmetry, have some good looks. As you can tell on the inside, we're now looking really good on the inside, getting that detail and the different runners you can see merging on the inside um, back to our original design. You'll notice the wastegate flange is positioned after the merge. Uh, that's to get the maximum priority of the exhaust gases going to the wastegate for easy boost control. If you watch some of our other videos, you can see that we're actually able to control the boost all the way through uh, the range using just the onboard air that the turbochargers are creating. No need for external air to, to hit those numbers now that we have a boost controller on there. And a lot of that can be attributed to the priority wastegate configuration that we put into these manifolds. So we're working hard to get the next samples out and we're intending on getting the pre-order shipped before uh, the end of the year in December and we'll continue R&D and these and getting them ready to rock so that when they end up on your vehicle, it's exactly what you expect from Armageddon. This is Dave from Armageddon Turbo. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow along as we get these products out into the market.